Hi there, thank you so much for joining us. Maxillaria variabilis on the left, cousin it, and Dendrobium hibiki on the right. Thank you for being here for another edition of Blooms for You. We decided this time to bring hibiki to cousin it's neighborhood where he lives. And I've got cousin it all quiet and nice and behaving well because I showered him before saying hi to everybody that is watching this video. So he's all quiet. He's happy. Yay! A little bit of water. He looks spanking clean and shiny. And the two of them are having a chin wag. The only thing that's missing is a little bit of fire around them there for a little bit of a chin wag but it's nice for Hibiki also to be in a different location every once in a while instead of on the shelf and back on the shelf and so forth. So welcome. As per usual, I am going to dedicate all my Hibiki blooms to anybody that's watching this video. All of them. Still so many left. And we'll be doing this for a while. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so yes, other blooms have opened. Other names have come up on the list. Let's go and have a look, see who's come up and what's been around recently. And we'll get back to these two very, very shortly. Tolumnia Golden Fire, my goodness, is starting to be really, really a productive and wonderful Tolumnia to have around. My blooming alley just pops with this yellow. First of all, because this spike is so abundant, it's my second one on the Tolumnia Golden Fire. You can see up here, is the first spike, the first blooms are back up here, they're fading. The branching is just starting to open, so we'll see that in another video. But first of all, I want to focus on this spike that has two, four, six, eight, ten blooms. And I would like to dedicate these cuties, cuties to Summer Robinson, Ufta, and Liz. Because they're so small, I figured we'd just spread the love a little bit and just do three dedications to say thank you very much. Because look, 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 look. There we go, without any of the sun reflecting on the blooms. Now, isn't that astounding? Oh gosh, I love them. They're getting more and more vibrant and much more abundant as well. Incredible. Super pleased. If you know my history with my Tolumnias at the beginning of the season, I almost nuked the roots entirely. Just about eliminated my collection here. <laughs> well, none of them have died, literally, but I still have two stragglers that are still struggling. They didn't quite get a bounce back this season as I had hoped, but most of them, most of them are looking lush and healthy now and some of them are doing this for us. Oh, I think it's amazing. So, Summer Robinson, Ufta and Liz. Ten blooms of golden fire, which actually remind me of little teddy bears. They bloom for the three of you to say thank you so very, very much for your support here on my channel. You're also very appreciated. Your timing was superb. <laughs> it was so important. It was a pivotal moment for my channel. I was sorry for that jiggle. I was just reaching 1K. So you and your subscriptions came in. You helped me get over. You helped me get over that mark. I'll be ever, ever so grateful to you for that. Thank you to the three of you, Summer Robinson, Ufta and Liz, for being so kind and supporting my channel. My little Tolumnia, well, big girl now, big girl. Let's say my big Tolumnia with a beautiful spike, golden fire. These blooms are for you. Phalaenopsis cornucervi variety chatella day. Again, I hope nobody is bored. <laughs> I can't believe this orchid. I'm honestly over the moon with what it's doing this time of year. Incredible. Second spike. We have lost the blooms on the first spike that it came with. So that's it. That's that spike done for the season. The second spike is like as if it were June. <laughs> it's absolutely remarkable. But I have bloom number three and four for Soul Sister and Kill Hooch to say thank you to you very, very much for supporting me here on Ninja Orchids. So very much appreciated my little Lady Chatterley, as I prefer to call her. 
is just performing like, you know, it's as if the season hasn't caught up with her and hey, I'm not complaining. Even the second spike is starting to branch. So we are really in for a great show come 2022. Not that she hasn't already given us something spectacular this year, better than ever. But to see now a branch coming out of this second spike, I love it, absolutely love it. And now she has a fragrance again. Decides to give me a fragrance, her typical plastic fragrance, like a Tupperware with the remainder of a cake or cookies in the box, but more on the cake, the doughy side. Very delicious. I must say, I absolutely love it. And <laughs> she's not done yet. There will be one more bloom, as maybe two. <laughs> Maybe two, but there's a beautiful bud already forming in the back here and there's another one right here. So the second spike is already proving to be a fantastic, fantastic asset to this orchid. Soul Sister and Kill Hooch want to say thank you via these two blooms for your support on my channel. Give you two each a massive big smile through the blooms themselves that resemble smiles. I like to say that the yellow on the column is like a top hat. Where are you? Right there. You got the two eyes and the smile. So we have two smiles, two thank yous to Soul Sister and Kill Hooch. Really, really appreciate having you here. Thank you so much. Second spike, <laughs> Van der Leppard yawn. Very, very late in the season, but who cares? Who cares? I don't, because I get to dedicate these to Elle Decker and Denise P. Also, to you two ladies to say thank you very, very much for your support on my channel. This orchid is not supposed to be in bloom this time of year, and this clip is being filmed in the middle of September. Well, still unusual, still unusual. And the other blooms in the back, they are also lasting a very, very long time because it is warm, but not scalding hot. And they're just keeping their shape, but you can see the colors are a little bit duller and I would call that fading due to the sun and the light. They're not by any means getting old, but you can see how the freshly opened blooms are a little bit more on the green side, on the petals and sepals. The lip is also much more predominant on the red Bordeaux front. That is why I called her Leopard Yawn because of all the gorgeous spotting and that lip. It's like a leopard yawning. It is possible that it's a cross between Suavis and Cristata, but I'm not sure. And as I'm not going to go on a show with her, <laughs> I'm just calling her Leopard Yawn. I find it so much more fitting. Anywho, she is also showing off her fragrance at this point in time, which is a delicious, sweet fragrance, a little bit more of a sugary side, just plain white sugar, not taking in consideration any kind of brown sugar or anything like that. It's very sugary at this point in time, which I'm not used to. She used to smell a little bit more on a candy side, a sweet honeysuckle side. Nope, this just reminds me of sugar and nothing more, but very, very pleasant. So El Decker and Denise P, this is my Vanda Leopard Yawn blooming for the two of you to say thank you to both of you so very, very much for your support here on my channel and know that it is greatly, greatly appreciated. What a beautiful bloom, I must say. This is Lelia Diana and beautiful also means Bella, but Bella in this case has one L, but Bella Vela would be beautiful candle. One L for Bella, I don't care. This is a beautiful bloom of a Lelia Diana for Bella Vela. And this Lelia Diana is blooming for the first time. Needless to say, I am quite happy to see her bloom and I was not expecting anything this year because the plant itself is not quite big enough according to what else I have seen on the interwebs regarding size and bloom potential. So this is super, super unexpected, but you see, she's tiny. She is so tiny. 
And just a single bloom, as she does, one bloom per growth, not fragrant, but definitely very interesting. Now, look at her from the side. I mean, compared to the size of the orchid, which is not even 10 centimeters, well, maybe 10 centimeters in height, but the bloom is almost like half that in size. So it's quite a little show. If I can ever get more than one growth on this orchid, get it to be a nice bushy little plant, then the size of the bloom is actually out of proportion for the size of the orchid and could be something quite spectacular in the years to come. Very, very nice to see a first time bloomer all the time. You can see how the petals are retracting towards the back. Everything is very, very closed up and it, that's how she stays. She's been open now about two weeks, maybe not quite two weeks. She's holding on really, really well. The temperatures have been relatively mild, so that might be of help as well. But look at the detail of that lip. My goodness, if that isn't a landing pad to attract pollinators, I don't know what they need to feel welcome in there. Isn't that amazing? Oh my goodness. And then in the sun, I'm going to try and get her in the sun, but she has such a gorgeous crystalline effect. It's like it's been sprinkled with fairy dust. So I'm going to scoot back a little bit, bring her forward into the sun and hope that it won't wash her out. And if it does, we'll scoot her back to where she is now and continue to admire her. So you see how that works with the sun. Unfortunately, the pink kind of disappears. I don't know if you can appreciate the crystalline effect that the petals and sepals have. Just a little bit of a touch of chartreuse up there, like a Phalaenopsis violacea. Love, love that little detail. But all in all, sort of a closed bloom, and that is how she is. She won't ever really open up. Maybe if I put the camera shadow over her, we can get a better appreciation. But you see, even late afternoon sun will wash her out. Anyhow, Bella Vella, my Lelia Diana, first time bloomer, she blooms for you to say thank you so very, very much for your support here on my channel. Really, really appreciate it. And I sincerely hope that you are doing well in your part of the world. The second spike of my Lelia Regentii has opened. This was the growth here that we had in the previous Blooms For You video. And these were still in bud, but now they're open. And <laughs> no matter how you direct them, you can see where I put them to guide the spike towards the light. Well, okay, Rapiculus Lelias will do what the Rapiculus Lelias do. So we'll get in a bit closer to the blooms. But first I want to dedicate these two cute little blooms to Tequila Sunrise. Let me see if I can get this to focus. Talk about complicated, but we'll give it a go because I want Tequila Sunrise to see the blooms. And I hope that is in focus. It's a beautiful sparkling day today. Very bright atmosphere, crystal clear skies. But yeah, they are too cute. Absolutely adorable. I tried to have plant in bloom together, but they don't last very long. So I made sure to get this clip before these guys go downhill as well. This one here looks a little bit like a little daisy. Oh my goodness. I hope that is in focus. So hard to see. Maybe like that. Can we see it better? There we go. Very, very adorable. As they present themselves, my little Lelia table is looking quite cute at the moment. All white blooms, but hey, some of them are mature enough to do this. This is cute. So Tequila Sunrise for your support here on my channel. My Lelia Regentii, this spike, these two cute little blooms. They bloom for you. Thank you so much for your support. But wait, there's more. So we'll put them in the back. There we go. Make some space. Ta-da! <laughs> Another little Lelia Regentii. Who knew? Well, I did. 
because these two pieces came at the same time, they kind of split. It was one orchid two years ago, maybe. And uh, yeah, they split. So I put them in separate pots. One day, maybe I can give one away. But look, this one is also in bloom. And this one goes to Daily Poppins to say thank you so very much for your support on my channel as well. Very much appreciated. And once again, I hope this is in focus. But what I am glad to see is that they are labeled correctly. In this case, it's always a bit difficult with the Rapiculus Lelias. You never know. They all look very similar, but what we are going to see in the next clip, I'm going to show you the difference between the Regentii and the Regina. So, Tequila Sunrise and Daily Poppins, my two cute little Lelia Regentii with their cute little blooms and spikes, they bloom for you. Thank you very, very much, both of you, for your support. I hope everything is going well in your part of the world. And here, by contrast, is Lelia Regina, looking very, very similar. There are some differences, though, despite the fact that if you look at them next to each other, which I will show you just now, you would say, hmm, Nope, it's the same orchid, but no, it's not. So for the queen of crafts, my love of crafts, I have a Lelia Regina blooming for you to say thank you to you as well for supporting me here on my channel. Regina, Latin for queen or reigning. And as far as I'm concerned, your channel with your love of crafts or called my love of crafts. I love it. I enjoy it very, very much it is extremely relaxing watching you work. I've got four blooms on my first spike of the season for Lelia Regina. And let's see if we can get in and get a better visual of them because they also are quite tiny, like little daisies once again. But what you can see here, and it's gonna be a little bit more tough as we bring the other ones into the scene to show you the difference, these blooms look a little bit more, let's say, tinted at the edges. There's always something going on at the edge of the blooms. It's almost like there's a blush of, well, dirt or something, but it's got this pinkish little accent on the back and it makes even a bloom look like it's old, but it's not. Thankfully, they all opened at once, thankfully. <laughs> because the other spike in my other blooms for you dedication, that one bloom collapsed pretty, pretty quickly. But here you can see the delicate, delicate detail. And the classic, classic characteristic of that frilly lip that will identify a ridiculous Lelia quite quickly, even if the name is unknown. Beautiful spike, very proud of this orchid, doing really well. And I've got another spike coming on the front lead. So let me see if I can bring up the other ones and see if I can also show you the difference in the orchid as to, well, the blooms might look similar, but the orchid itself, they both look different. So you see at a glance, you would think, hmm, those are the same, but they're not. You look at the structures, you can tell that there's two different orchids going on here even though the blooms look similar. A little bit of a jiggle there, sorry. You see, these little pseudobulbs have a different accent. They have anthocyanin. The back of the leaves as well have a bit of anthocyanin, and they're also a little bit more slender in their structure. But the blooms, again, to the naked eye, you would think are the same. But even though the camera right now is showing a little bit of yellow, but that's because they're in the distance, it is actually true that the Regentii blooms are much, much whiter in their appearance to the naked eye, as opposed to the Regentii in the back. If you see the structures of the Regentii, how they compare, when I zoom out, thank you for bearing with me, you can see that the structures are much more green there is no anthocyanin on the leaves. The pseudobulbs are also a little bit chubbier. There is a very clear difference between the two orchids. Now, if I were to see them out in their natural habitat, I would probably be able to identify 
a Regentii as opposed to a Regina. I am relieved that they haven't been mislabeled when they arrived to me. The purpose of collecting as many Rapiculus lalias as possible is to get all the varieties and not get mislabeled ones simply because the blooms are so similar. You can also see that the blooms of the Regentii back here, the column is also a little tad more orange. Whereas this one is a bit more creamy and then the lip shows a little bit more of the yellow, egg yolk yellow. And these, well, egg yolk yellow, but going more into an orange tinge. I know, details, details, but that is the beauty of these Lelias that I just love. I love the detail, I love the difference. I love how they all grow similar, but have their different attributes and the way that they look and present themselves. Anyway, I ramble on, I babble on. I hope that this was interesting to you as it is to me. So my love of crafts, this is my little Regentii right here. To you, the queen of crafts. Thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. I really appreciate your time and I really look forward to your next video. Hopefully maybe some diamond painting coming up soon. <laughs> Have a beautiful day my love of crafts. Thank you. Virginia Adams and Jenny Hansen. I have a CG Roebling with two beautiful blooms here to dedicate to the two of you to say thank you so very, very much for your support here on my channel. I did not expect this to happen this season. I knew that I would get to your names this season to say thank you very much, Virginia Adams and Jenny Hansen, but I did not expect it to be the CG Rowling because I did not expect her to bloom. This has been a mad season, a different season. Blooms have not arrived. That would have long passed already bloomed. So to see this, oh my word, and to see these blooms at the size that they are, my word even more. It's hard to describe. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. She smells like roses, like beautiful, classy, expensive roses. It's like you're walking in a rose garden. And then there's the nose. Sorry for that. There's the nose to smell the scent with. Massive, massive blooms. I cannot tell you how thrilled I am that I have this to give away to beautiful ladies this year, Virginia Adams and Jenny Hansen. So let's have a look-see at the other one and I will also show you why I am so surprised that she is actually blooming. First of all, the beginning of the season she got a cleanup. It was more of an up pot, but you know, you get a bit carried away once you've got the orchid out of the pot. You get a bit carried away and you clean up a little more than you intended to. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful sight. The flares as well of these blooms. So yeah, and then she went into this massive pot and everything was great. She was doing really well. I had new growths coming. I had new roots coming. Just, you know, perfect timing as you do as you try to the best of anyone's ability. And then you get a beautiful growth and it matures. So I'm gonna be very careful here because she's kind of on a pedestal and the growth matures. Let me just keep turning. Thank you for your patience. So this right here, beautiful, massive growth. And I've been eyeing it and eyeing it all season long, just because I expected this one to bloom just like the predecessors had, right? Yeah, there's no sheath back here, none whatsoever. And then my second lead over here, right here, produced a smaller growth. Late, but at least I have another direction of growth, super happy. And this one here was a little bit bigger last year, as you can tell. So, you know, I wasn't expecting anything to happen because it was all rather late in the season. And to my surprise, it did produce a sheath. 
I was still not convinced that it was going to bloom because the growth is much, much smaller. But it turns out, ta-da, I got me some CG robing blooms named Cultivar Blue Indigo in 2021 against all odds. I would have placed a bet and I would have lost. But there we are. Beautifully fragrant, open about three days now. So they're at their prime and my blooming alley is quite filled with the heady rose fragrance like you would walk through a rose garden. Just remarkable. The color on the screen is also very, very well matched to what I'm seeing in real life. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Let me see if I can zoom in again a little bit more because the veining on the petals, I hope the camera picks that up. Like delicate, delicate tissue paper. You see that? Oh, yes. Virginia Adams, Jenny Hansen, my CG Roebling Blue Indico. Thank you to the two of you ladies so much for your support on my channel. These two blooms are for you. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I have to say that these give me a lot of pleasure. I really like seeing names come up. I like seeing my blooms and my spikes. I like allocating the names to the spike in preparation of our Blooms For You videos. Thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna leave these two to chinwag a little bit more. There's enough shade here that Hibiki will be fine. And I'm gonna love and leave you. Thank you. Thank you for your support, for subscribing, for your comments. Really appreciated. By the way, all the messages that I left in the comments for Cousin It, he actually does get them. So thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Have a lovely day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.